The I-400 class of submarines were built for and used by the Imperial Japanese Navy during the Second World War. At the time, they were the largest submarines ever built, only being surpassed in the 1960s with the advent of nuclear ballistic missile submarines. A particularly unique feature of this class was their ability to launch a number of seaplanes from the upper deck. Being housed in a watertight hangar of sorts, the aircraft would be removed, assembled and then launched whilst the submarine was surfaced. Join me in this video as I build and review the 1 to 700 scale plastic model kit of the I-400 class submarine from Hobby Boss. Hi, I'm Matt and you're watching Model Minutes. As always, before I start the build, Please remember that adult supervision may be required due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. Hobby Boss recommends this kit to those aged 14 and older. If you'd like to see an unboxing review of this kit, where I take a look at the contents of the box, you can find that on my channel. For this video, I will focus on how well the kit builds up. I do usually wash my plastic parts in warm soapy water to remove any oil or grease which could be left over from the moulding process, and this will give a clean surface for paint and cement to stick to. For this one though, I opted to skip this step and instead crack straight on with the build. I will remove the parts from the sprue either by cutting away with a sharp knife or snipping off with my cutters. The rough areas and any flash can then be sanded smooth using a sanding stick. I used Revell Contactor Cement to attach the lower part of the hull with the rudder and propeller. I like using this glue as the needle allows for accurate placement of the cement. It's quite a thick cement though, so it's not ideal for running into gaps. Here, the plane, which is a representation of an Aichi M6A float plane, is being cut from the sprue. It comes in a few parts which are all quite small. These consist of the main body of the aircraft, the floats and the propeller. The floats are carefully cemented into the slots on the underside of the aircraft. This is a fiddly job and some tweezers could be a useful tool here to get them in the right place. The propeller, which is incredibly small in this scale, can then be cemented carefully onto the nose of the aircraft. Some railing components need to be cemented into these four holes in the sides of the top deck of the submarine. I carefully applied cement to the holes, then pushed the railings into place. Again, this can be a little fiddly, but the moulding of the parts is good, so it all lines up okay. The tubular hanger component can now be cemented onto the top deck of the submarine, which goes into place with no issues. The conning tower cements onto the side of the hanger. I'm using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement here as it has a really good flow characteristic and can get into all those awkward gaps. Here, these masts can be cemented into the top of the conning tower. A gun needs to be cemented into the hole just behind the masts. These parts are all quite small and fiddly, so again, tweezers are being used to help. Humbrol 165 medium sea grey satin acrylic paint was thinned with Tamiya Acrylic Thinners X20A at a rough ratio of about two parts paint to one part thinner. This helps improve the flow of the paint and speeds up the drying time, whilst also helping to avoid leaving brush strokes in the paint finish. You might find that a number of thin coats might be needed though. I used this paint on the upper deck assembly I had previously built, whilst also the small details still on the sprue, which include the various gun turrets that I have not yet added. Revell 83 Rust Matte Enamel was the next paint to be used. This is a very old pot of paint which I've had for probably about 20 years, and has had quite a lot of use. I've therefore taken to thinning the paint with white spirit inside the pot to help prevent it from drying out and to help prolong its life. Using a medium flat brush, I applied this in a number of coats onto the bottom half of the hull. At the time, I thought this looked to be a good representation of the red colour asked for by the painting instructions, but having finished the build, it could be a little redder. 
Humbrol light grey matte acrylic was next to be used. This was also thinned with the Tamiya acrylic thinners, then carefully applied to the lower surfaces of the aircraft. Ravel 88 ochre brown matte acrylic paint was also thinned and then carefully applied to all the wooden decking areas on the top half of the model. I did this carefully with a fine brush, taking my time to get it in the right places. With that paint now dry, it's time to add the last few parts to the upper half of the submarine. These include some more masts and gun turrets. I applied a small amount of cement to their little holes and then carefully pushed them into place. I had to make sure that I didn't ruin the paint I'd already applied as I did this. Humbrol 30 dark green matte acrylic was also thinned and then carefully applied to the top surfaces of the aircraft, taking care to avoid the lower surfaces I'd already painted. These parts are the arms which slot into the display base. I decided I would use this cheap black gloss spray paint to quickly cover these. Please remember to wear the correct protective equipment and use an appropriate environment when doing spray painting. I normally do most of my spray painting outside to help protect my lungs. The main base part comes pre-molded in black plastic with the model information already printed on. The arms, which are now dry, can be cemented into the slots in the top of the base. Here I'm carefully cementing the lower half and top half of the submarine together. It has a pretty snug fit, so some pressure will be needed to make sure they line up properly, but you must take care to avoid damaging all the little details. This satin sealer will now be applied to all the various parts of the model. This will help protect the paint and give a good base layer for the application of decals, which can help prevent them from silvering. I'm doing the decals in one go, so the whole sheet was soaked in warm water and the transfers allowed to release from the backing paper. Humbrol decal fix was brushed into the relevant areas and then the decal slid on top into the correct position. A further layer of decal fix can be applied onto the top of the decal when it's in the right place. Decal fix will help soften the decal into the surface details of the model and make it look as though it's painted on. Given the small scale of this model, some of these decals are really tiny and will require care when positioning them. The decals are to a good quality though and apply well with no ripping. Whilst the decals were drying, I used Humbrol 29 dark earth acrylic paint to very carefully paint the propeller on the aircraft. This gold acrylic paint pen was used on the propellers on the bottom of the hull of the submarine. I thought I'd try this out as a quick way of getting them painted. The nib was a bit large for this task really, but it turned out okay in the end and it looked alright. The satin spray varnish makes a reappearance here and is again applied to all the model parts to help protect the decals and give a uniform finish. Next, this clear matte varnish was applied to help dull down the shine from the satin and give a more matte effect. I did this from quite far away and lightly sprayed it over the model to help avoid peeling the paint, which happened when I was building my Mr. Craft PZL37 and would rather not repeat that mistake. With the varnish now dry, Citadel Non Oil Acrylic Wash was applied to the model. This wash will flow into the recess details helping to apply contrast and an element of weathering to the surfaces. With that done, a cotton bud soaked in acrylic thinners was used to remove the excess wash. This will result in the recessed areas retaining the dark colour whilst the raised areas look cleaner. I tried to do this in such a way that might help emphasise weathering that could occur whilst the vessel is at sea working in the direction that water might possibly flow over and around the submarine. Humbrol 53 gunmetal grey acrylic and number 12 copper acrylic were now mixed together to form a sort of metallic rust kind of paint. I then dry brushed this over the model to try and add another layer of weathering. I tried to apply it in a vertical direction to depict rust streaks from any raised surfaces. Finally, the aircraft can be glued into position on the catapult on the bow of the submarine. 
And that's it. That's as far as I went with the build of my Hobby Boss I-400 submarine in 1 to 700 scale. Generally, this is a reasonably simple kit to build, with all parts being well designed and fit together quite well. Flash is also to a minimum, which helps create a model quite quickly. I think this took the best part of the day to complete, most of the time though being taken up allowing the paints to dry. The instructions were easy to follow, and the painting instructions being printed in colour really helped too. The decals were well printed and applied easily to the model. The only thing I'd say about this kit is that some of the moulded parts must be somewhat out of scale due to the small size. I know that they are really small and fine in places, but perhaps some etched metal parts would have been better, particularly for the propellers and guns, but that would push the price and complexity of the model up. Speaking of the price, at the time this video was made, the retail price of this kit in the UK is around £5, which seems reasonable, but in my opinion, not really worth more than that. If you can find it under this price though, that would be a bonus. This kit has only had two releases so far as part of the Hobby Boss range, with this particular version being the most recent and dating from 2018, and as a result may not be currently available in all sellers. The first release of this kit was back in 2008, where it was introduced as a new tooling, so at the time this video was made, the tooling is about 12 years old, and given that age, I'd say it is reasonably in line, or maybe slightly better, than the toolings of that era. I feel as though this could be a good introduction to naval models, as it doesn't have a high part count, and the painting is quite simple, with a low number of decals. The only issues that you might encounter are the application of the small details and the tiny transfers. In conclusion, this is a nicely tooled and a low price kit which builds well and looks great when finished. It might present a few challenges due to the small size of some of the parts, but generally though, I rather enjoyed building the I-400 class submarine in 1-700 to scale from Hobby Boss. Let me know in the comments what you think of my finished build and techniques, and also any suggestions you might like to see for future builds on my channel. As always, honourable mention to my patrons over on Patreon, whose amazing support allows me to continue to make new videos for you all to see. Their contribution goes straight into purchasing new kits and products to build and review. To find out more about how to pledge your support and the perks it gets you, including early access to videos and behind the scenes stuff, take a look at the links in the description. You can also connect with me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and my own Discord server. If you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you're new here so you never miss a video. All that's left to say is thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the workbench again next time.